Hi, my name is Robolt, and I also go by Rebolt 808A on Twitch, and I am the host of uh, Environmental Soup. Uh, this seal I'm not uh, recording on uh, through the facilities of Trent Radio. Uh, because I recently moved uh, to a new city, so I will be uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, Twitch. Uh, today I will be talking about uh, a notice in the environmental registry called Regulating 10 Species and Four Genera as Invasive Species under Ontario's Invasive Species Act 2015. Uh, the number is 019 7360. Uh, 019 And it's under the Invasive Species Act 2015, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. And you have until October 2nd, 2023 to make comments at 11.59 uh, p.m. on October 2nd. Uh, and the summary is the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry is proposing regulatory amendments under the Invasive Species Act 2015 that would classify um, 10 species and four genera of species as either prohibited or restrictive, restricted invasive species. I, overall, I believe that uh, regulating invasive species is a good thing. Um, but I, I will get into uh, some of the issues uh, with this uh, proposal. Uh, mostly it's the lack of enforcement um, and the long time it takes for um, items to be, I, species to be uh, properly regulated. Um, And then decisions are based on the risk that a species pro proposes to Ontario's natural environment and social economic well being. Uh, they have the potential to or, or, or already causing negative impacts to Ontario's natural environment and the regulation under the Invasive Species Act 2015 would improve Ontario's ability to prevent their introduction or spread. Uh, the government is seeking feedback on the proposed species, uh, prohibited invasive species, or bought in, they cannot be bought into Ontario, depo deposited, released, possessed, or transported in Ontario, and cannot be propagated, bought, sold, or traded in Ontario. And then the species in general proposed to be regulated as prohibited invasive species or eyed. Lysolus idus fish. Um, I'm trying to pronounce the Latin name. Eastern mosquito fish. Gambasia holbrook is a fish. Western mosquito fish, Gambrosa affinis is a fish, red shinal, uh, Crabilia latrinus, it's a fish, oxygen weed, Lagos bone major aquatic plant, Nutria. Um, 
Casto, Copas, Memo, Bottomas, Janus, Salvinia, Aquatic Plant, Crayfish, Janus Procrambrius, an invertebrate crayfish, Janus Pasticus, invertebrate. And then those proposed exceptions. Um, um, the the eyed eastern most of fish, western most of fish, and red sino. Uh, and then they're saying that exceptions would allow incidental capture of these species while fishing in Ontario. Um, my feeling is that <clears throat> incidental, uh, like, um, people should know what they're fishing when they uh, get a fishing license. Um, and then I, I don't believe that there should be a transition period. Uh, for our uh, species um, because a transition period would allow the continued spread of invasive species. Um, and I don't like the idea of ha continuing input, import, uh, transportation, um, and sale of red shrimp crayfish. Uh, although they are all dead, uh, they could carry uh, potential diseases, uh, but it does say and prepared for human consumption, so cooked, um, so that might uh, reduce the, the risk. Um, and then those uh, restricted uh, invasive species. Uh, you were using wattle milfoil. I'm surprised that that hasn't been regulated uh, a lot earlier. Uh, floating primrose willow, flowering rush, tree of heaven. This was specifically mentioned in an Auditor General's report from 2022 in November. Wattle phones. Um, and then they're proposing additional prohibitions, possess of transport a member of a restricted invasive species in a provincial park or conservation reserve, bring a member of a restricted invasive species into Ontario or causing it to be brought into Ontario, propagate members of a restricted invasive species, buy, sell, lease, or trade, or offering to buy, sell, lease, or trade members of restricted invasive species. I think that's good. Um, I don't see Norway maple in this, uh, which was uh, specifically called out by the Auditor uh, General. I, I believe Norway is not um, regulated. Um, yeah, and I do agree that it, these uh, proposals are good if they are enforced uh, overall uh, with some, I would like to see some uh, um, like less exemptions. Um, uh, and then there's Appendix C attached, which provides our uh, increased information, um, like Eurasian wattle milfoil, uh, it describes where it's from, where it's established, poten potential pathways, oh, where did it go? Oh, yeah, potential pathways, um, potential impacts, um, um, yeah, so, yeah, so you can check out, 
um, Appendix uh, C for more information about the specific <coughs> indiv individuals. Uh, there's also uh, species at risk public registry. Um, so if you can find, if you know that those are an interaction with a an invasive species, you can look up. You can look up that. Um, but we're talking about invasive invasive species in particular. Um, and then uh, those are those two articles that I found in the Norwal. Um, one by uh, Rachel Morgan and another one by Emma McIntosh and Fatima Said. And uh, I have, I'll look at those articles. Uh, so the first article is as climate change brings invasive species, Ontario response called weak and ineffective. Um, and um, the enforcement mechanism is the biggest weakness. Um, did I? Okay. Um, there was an audit uh, by Barney Lisk in November. Um, increased threats are not being met by environmental protections. Um, Ontario is failing to collaborate with the federal government and cities on invasive species management. Um, 85% of municipal respondents and 74% of conservation authority respondents did not know uh, their dele delegated role in provincial responses. Um, and then uh, the article is saying invasive species related costs for 2021-2022 uh, were over 50 million and uh, the Natural Resource Ministry dedicated less than 4 million annually to programming, so very un underfunded. Um, those understaffing um, and uh, there was not enough money to um, fund programs to address <clears throat> invasive species. Um, the last invasive species uh, strategic plan was implemented in 2012. Uh, this is from the article, um, and uh, those new technologies that could use use to control the program now. Um, so very out of date. Um, yeah, so that's that that article. And then another the article, Ontario is about to slash environmental protections. It already wasn't funding them, our little general says. Um, they gutted the conservation authorities that oversaw uh, key watersheds and floodplains. Uh, and they also saw oversaw uh, invasive species. So I'm just skipping ahead to invasive species. There's a lot, of, lot more stuff in this article. Um, I, unchecked invasive species are causing billions of dollars in damage to, to Ontario every year. Uh, like zebra mussels, uh, three point six billion. Um, oh, not just, oh, zebra mussels, phragmites, uh, etc. They 
they all cost 3.6 billion, but only four million is spent in annually. And uh, the difference between a million and a billion is um, extremely significant. Um, uh, th those like, um, I think it's like million is like 36 minutes versus 36 years. That, that type of difference. Um, it's, it's hard to comprehend. Um, and then those, uh, this, um, this is the Auditor General's report called Value for Money Audit Management of Invasive Species. Um, I, I made some highlights. Um, invasive species is one of the five biggest threats to biodiversity. They can negatively impact Ontario's tourism and recreation activities. Uh, the vectors for diseases such as Zika virus, West Nile virus, and dengue fever. <clears throat> um, and as we've just gone through the uh, pandemic, uh, it, we can't overstate uh, how um, we should uh, tackle the invasive species um, because we don't want to go through an, um, additional pandemics. COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing. Um, there's lengthy delays in regulating invasive species. Uh, there's only one staff member uh, performing risk assessment of um, work. Um, they gave an example, uh, Carolina fan wilt was not regulated until almost five years after it was, after a substantially complete risk assessment was provided. Harmful invasive plants are unregulated and several are available to buy. Uh, at least 30 harmful terrestrial plants uh, those uh, ten uh, in the in the proposal. Uh, one, it is good that uh, one that was singled out, uh, the tree of heaven, is included in the proposal that I talked about. Um, and. They're not systematically tracked. Uh, they don't coordinate well with the federal government. There's inadequate management of, in, of gaps in collaboration lead to inadequate management of invasive species. Uh, program partners lack funding to sufficiently combat uh, invasive species. Um, so, yeah, the four million versus, I, yeah, four million versus like several billion. Conservation officers have decreased uh, from 1998. However, the legislation has increased and they're not trained on identifying invasive species. Um, they lack the Ministry of Natural, the Natural Resources Ministry lacks sufficient information about potentially harmful invasive species. Um, they lack current information about the damage to ecosystems and related economic impacts. Um, so that should definitely change. Um, but with the lack of funding, that's a huge barrier. 
And then they go through like environmental impacts, agricultural impacts of our invasive species. Um, so environmental impacts that could cause local or global species extinction, soil degradation, erosion, altering forest fire cycles. Uh, that's a key item to note uh, because of the amount of forest fires this year. Uh, and then the impact uh, ecosystem services such as water purification, carbon sequestration, and climate regulation. Those $2.2 billion impacts, uh, agricultural impacts, they cause uh, new additional host for crop diseases. They reduce crop yields and they require greater use of pesticides, which is an additional uh, environmental impact. Um, forestry, uh, those a sp spongy moth caterpillars are removed at least from a uh, record uh, 1.78 million hectares of Ontario forest in 2021. Uh, so less healthy forest uh, likely means more um, forest fires. Um, and then 5 million in lost productivity value. So the, there was spending less money than the amount of damage to the forestry. Um, that's something to note. And then those uh, impacts uh, to human health, such as new diseases, impacts to tourism. Um, yeah, um, those also. Uh, yeah, I, I said that they're not addressed in a timely ma manner. There's only one uh, staff member, and then they don't have a list of recognized invasive species in the province to prioritize and shortlist. Let's see. Um, uh, the, the ministry took 46 months to list and regulate species after they were assessed. Um, and then those, uh, I looked at some of the plants. Um, And 58% of invasive species were intentional. Um, and then the report was saying, therefore, it's preventable. Uh, surprisingly, you can buy invasive plants at Home Depot, those in Lona. And then there's some photos. Yeah, Norway maple, I didn't see Norway maple. <coughs> As an example, <clears throat> in the regulated species, and then did I? No. Oh. Uh, they don't consolidate and store invasive species data. Uh, that's troubling. Yeah, um, and then um, there was a, a third article, Ontario's mandate levels. Um, there was reporting on that uh, from 2018 by Isaac Callahan and Colin DeMello. And this article is Ontario's 2018 mandate levels told ministers to limit climate law impact on business. And I'm interested in the Ministry of Resources uh, specifically. Uh, the Minister of Environment was 
told to review environmental laws to make sure that they weren't cumbersome for voters and then it obstruct business interest. Um, so it's, it's odd that there was a lack of tackling invasive, invasive species um, uh, because they impact businesses. Um, natural resources and forestry to, was told to make sure that laws are under uh, his control. The, uh, Jeff York uh, will not an undue burden on municipalities, nodals, or businesses. Um, I think I highlighted. Uh, and then the Ministry of Natural Resources was told to uh, view Ontario via various pieces of wildlife protection legislation to ensure that they are properly rooted in scientific fact, do not cause undue burden on municipalities, nor laws, or business. Um, I, as I've shown, that there was a huge impact from invasive species on um, businesses. Um, so, yeah, that is uh, this um, uh, an overview of the environmental registry notice proposal. Um, I plan on doing um, one one um, a video of just exploring one. Um, I didn't. I did look at. Uh, I did look for uh, comments on on this proposal and didn't find uh, comments. Um, referencing the the proposals sometimes there there all comments from various organizations um, um, yeah so overall this is good um, i'm I'm concerned that there isn't more uh, invasive species included. And um, enforcement mechanisms um, may be lacking, and there should be um, ad additional, I mean, less uh, exemptions. Um, but you may come to uh, a different uh, conclusion or additional conclusion. Uh, based on what I uh, shown, and uh, hopefully you're able to uh, make an informed uh, comment. Uh, those um, additional links um, that are related, um, those the Ontario Invasive Species Act. Um, Ontario Regulation 354-16, um, et cetera. Um, and then uh, those, uh, oh, if you want to view the material in person, um, some supporting materials may not be available online, uh, and you can re request to view them in person. Um, and then there was uh, a list, um, there was the MNOF Biodiversity and Invasive Species section, 300 Water Street, 5th floor, North Tower, Peterborough, Ontario, K9J, uh, 3C7, Canada. And uh, you can submit online or by uh, mail, uh, by Mail, it's the Biodiversity Coordinator MNOF, Biodiversity Section 300 Water Street, 5th floor, North Tower, Peterborough, Ontario, K9J, 3C7, Canada. And then, and then those um, <clears throat> connect with us 
biodiversity coordinator at all. 705-755-1940. Uh, and then there's an email, invasive.species at ontario.ca. Yeah, uh, please let me know if you like the standalone uh, videos for um, uh, environmental literacy notices. Um, my, if things go well, I, I plan on combining all of the notices, uh, a bunch of notices in one video. Um, uh, but also have some of the shorter videos uh, going into more detail or long long videos on each one i guess and uh yeah i hope that you uh, enjoy the rest of your day i plan on talking about um other environmental notices um and I, I plan on um, making more content uh, about uh, the green belt uh, and um, all the other news, uh, the climate change report that was hidden for, for a while. Um, yeah, uh, thank, thank you for listening. And... I will stop show and then